I'm getting a buzzing. Hello, everybody. I'm trying to stop a buzzing. I don't know what it is. Um, Jonna, do you have your phone set up for Instagram? Yes. Okay, she is sending you an invite to Bow Wow. There we go. Did you get it? Great. Yay! Oh my gosh. Instagram is going to work today. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's a first. I am pretty sure that's a first. Well, everyone, welcome. Um, so today is actually the day. The uh, Is your volume down on your phone? Yeah. Of course not. Okay. <laughs> no, that's part of the problem. Okay. Uh, so today is the day, the National Pet Choking Awareness Day. And my guest today is Jonna Devereaux from Bow Wow Labs. And uh, she and her team were instrumental in getting this awareness as a recognized day. And I am so thankful um, because I, I think that even though I worked in emergency medicine for 10 years and I was in clinical practice for 36 years and I saw so many choking incidents, um, it, it didn't really hit me until, until we started having the conversation of how often this occurs. So, Jonna, welcome. <laughs> thank you so much for having me. And thank you for being a part of National Pet Choking Prevention Day. It's just such a huge honor to have you support this. Yeah. So, I mean, it's just, it's so huge. So you have the statistics. What, how many choking cases occur every year in our dogs so, and cats? So we only know about dogs and there's over 200,000 dogs that are raced to veterinary facilities or emergency hospitals each year because of choking alone. So 200,000 that are actually seen at veterinary clinics. So that doesn't even count those that choke at home and are, uh, you know, the choking is cleared by their owner or those that choke at home and die and it never gets reported. And it doesn't include our cats who have issues as well. So what is the, can you guys hear that? It's, <laughs> oh, he thinks it might be your microphone. I don't know. I don't know. I don't hear anything. Something, oh, you don't hear it on your end? It's coming through on our end. Um, Did it make you lose your train of thought? <laughs> no, it's just, I don't want it to, I don't want everybody else to be able to hear it on Facebook, YouTube. If it's just. Yeah. Can anyone on Instagram There hear is that? what? There's an echo coming from your mic. Either your headphones aren't connected to your computer correctly. Or she's, she's got plug in. I'm sorry, folks. Give us a minute. Oh, Judy. Oh. It sounds like an old, old, old time modem. Yes, that is what it sounds like. So strange. Every time the guest talks, I hear it. I'm hearing just the, it sounds like a phone modem in the background. So people on uh, Instagram are saying they don't hear it. They don't hear it. Well, that's good. They don't hear anything, so. Does it sound better now? And people are saying they're not. Somebody can, some can hear it and some don't. We're getting sound normal. Yeah. Very odd. Okay, well, if it's not too annoying for people, we're going to keep going. Um, all right, so, uh, so we know that we have 200,000 cases that are run to veterinary clinics. And you know what? There's a lot more than that because in my history of working, I never once, who would I report that to? I never once reported a choking incident to anyone. So um, we know that there's a lot more that occurs than that 200,000. And unfortunately, not all of them have good endings. And it's a devastating way to lose your pet. Well, and I'm sorry, and, and worse, right, is that it's preventable. <laughs> <laughs> and it's preventable, exactly. Uh, most of the time, it's preventable. Uh, yesterday, we had Dr. Barry Sands, who's an emergency clinician out in San Diego, and she had a dog come in that had inhaled a palm seed from a palm tree. Uh, 
Uh, the owner was suspicious that the dog had done it. Um, so that was helpful, but she was talking about the, the hoops they had to jump through to get this thing out and some other things that she has seen in emergency medicine. So really, really interesting. So sometimes it's preventable and sometimes it's not, but certainly those cases that are preventable, we want to do everything we can to make people aware of the dangers that literally are lurking in your house, in your yard, around your pet's neck, um, so that hopefully no one ever has to go through a preventable death. Um, so we want to start out with, um, we're going to talk about common choking hazards. We talked about them a little bit with Dr. Sands yesterday, but we're going to talk about common choking hazards. And we're not talking about <laughs> just dogs. We're talking about dogs and cats. Yeah. Um, and yeah. if you're like my family and you have dogs and cats together in the house, it becomes even more dangerous because what might be safe for your cat is not safe for your dog. And things that your dog might have might be a problem for your cat. And things, if you have small children, we also have a three-year-old grandchild. If you have small children to throw into the mix, oh my gosh, like so many different things. So in order to um, have this conversation today, we gathered up a lot of common household choking things. And so I went to Gwen's house, my daughter, she lives next door. I went to her house and I opened up my granddaughter's toy box and said, well, what would be a choking hazard? Now, Gwen has two large dogs. She has a 55 pounder and about a 75 pounder. Well, here's one thing that cost her about $5,000, a pacifier. Now, it didn't get stuck in the dog's throat and it wasn't a choking hazard. He swallowed it and it caused a plug in his intestines. Um, I guess that wasn't deadly for him, but this could very easily obstruct an airway. So if you, and these dogs are very, very attracted to because they taste like milk and they taste like food and they have the smell of your family and your child. So um, absolutely be very careful with those. Uh, those are definitely a choking hazard. And I know when my kids were little, we used cloth diapers and I used them for burp cloths. And my dogs were so attracted to those. And let me tell you, if they're trying to swallow a huge cloth diaper, the chances of it getting stuck on the way down and being stuck in their mouth, in their airway, in their throat are pretty high. So make sure you're really aware. So that even goes for like dish towels that you use in the kitchen, um, pot holders, oven mitts, anything that has food scent on it, they're going to be attracted to that. So also in her toy box, I found these nice little plastic letters, you know, and they get played with by children with all kinds of food scents on their hands. And so for a dog, for a cat, this is a toy that they're going to bat around. It's too big for the cat to choke on, but then the dog comes along behind them and says, oh, goody. And then there's a little shape toy. Perfect, perfect obstruction. And they make little round ones of these as well. So if you have small children, definitely be aware of whether your animals are attracted to things that they have. And this is where it becomes really important to be picking things up all the time. So other household things that have nothing to do with things that we give our animals. If you have extension cords, mouse cords, for those of us who don't use uh, wireless, um, right now I've got a headphone cord on that's about six feet long. All those kinds of cords are also choking hazards. It's so easy for our animals to start messing with them and the next thing you know they're wrapped around their neck and they can't get loose um so let's start looking at oh string how many people give their cats a ball of yarn to play with i we used to see that in the kitty cat pictures all the time what a dumb toy i don't know i don't know why that ever became a thing other than cats think this is like the coolest thing in the world um but balls of yarn string if you're a knitter uh crochet any of that sewing stuff put all that stuff away so that your animals can't get to it all right so these kitty cat toys are very popular the fishing rod with the long i can't even get the whole long string in the picture but it's a it's a long string i got an even longer one here and it comes with different things to hang on the end and a lot of times what happens here's another one this is a oops this is a 
catnip toy that's got something else tangled on it too. So this is catnip. It smells great. It's going to attract them, but it's on a long string. And so what happens is people will tie these on a doorknob or to a piece of furniture. And we've got these long strings that are hanging. This one is catnip. I have to tell you, my dogs are very attracted to catnip. So for them to say, ooh, let me go eat that catnip toy, it's going to get stuck. So the And if they inhale, you know what happens when you chase after your dog who's got something you don't want them to have? And you say, give me that back. They look at you, they gulp, and they run. And that is how we get things wedged in the airway for sure. So with these long string type toys, never just hang them on a doorknob and leave them. These are for interactive play with you and your pet together. Do not leave these just loose in the house. Don't leave them laying on the floor. Don't leave them tied up somewhere. So if you have anything like that that has long strings, absolutely Make sure that it's a supervised toy only. Here's a little kitty wand. This one isn't quite so bad, but left to one of my dogs, I could totally see this part. And then with that trying to follow, not be cool. Um, oh, here's another kid toy. Anybody got Legos around their house? Because, you know, they come in like 2,000 pieces per kit. Dangerous. All right. So when we're looking at toys, we want to look at the appropriate size for the animal. So all these are little cat toys, little mice, little feathery balls, little puffy ball, a little jingle ball. These no, crinkly balls. These are pretty much OK for cats because it would be very hard for the cat. And this one has nice little air holes in it. It would be pretty difficult for the cat to get that whole thing in their mouth. But for my 10 pound dog, that is a perfect hazard. That is something that if they grab it, run, and uh, it's going to get stuck. These little tiny things. So if you have dogs and cats, you have to be really careful with that stuff. I think All it's right. also really important that we um, know our dogs too, right? Or know, know our pets. So know Absolutely. if your dog is a gulper, if they're going to be the ones that are going after everything, it's going to be more imperative that you pull things up or choose different toys yep. than if you have a dog that pretty much ignores Yep. Most everything, right? Yep. My dogs are like, it's on the floor. It's full on. We're going for it. We're going to gulp it. We're going to swallow it. We're going to chew it. Um, so these are common cat chokers, but also common dog chokers. Rubber bands. We got big ones. We got little ones. So the little ones are more likely to get stuck in the throat. These are big enough to actually go around a head and a neck. So make sure those are put away. Um, and this is not pet choking, but if you have small children and pets, don't leave rubber bands around. We had a family where the children kept wanting to do the dog's hair and the dog kept coming in with rubber bands embedded in its legs where she was putting rubber bands on. And we would tell the child, you can't do that. We'd tell the mom, you have to put them away. The dog would come back the next week with more rubber bands dug into the legs. So uh, rubber bands are hazardous in so many ways. Uh, hair ties. How many of you have cats who think that the hair tie, it smells like mom. It is the best thing in the world. And they love to bat them around. You find them all over your house, but they're a choking hazard, especially these. These are kind of thick and you know if your cat did start chewing on that that's gonna be a problem there's also a really um it's a pretty popular toy that's made from hemp and it has a hemp cord that has a little cork ball at the end which is the same type of thing so the ball is even more of a way to obstruct the airway at the same time so it's those little things plus you know not that i drink a lot of wine but <laughs> I could have come up with a few of those too. So yeah, corks. I mean, they smell good to the animals. And so and boy, talk about talk about the perfect cork for the airway. I mean, those are those are the perfect size to get stuck, particularly if they're chewing and they decide to take a breath in the middle of that chew. If they get startled, you're trying to get it away from them, another animal comes to to say, I would rather have that. And it's what they do is they gulp. Um so we talked, we've talked on and off this week about the right size ball for the mouth. So this is a little um, spiky type ball, which is kind of cool. Uh, and for my 10 pound dogs, this would be pretty good. It's a decent size for them. For Gwen's 70 pound dogs, that is an absolute choking hazard. So you have to match the size of the ball 
to the size of the dog. So we have these little wool dryer balls around our house. They make phenomenal cat toys. And my small dogs absolutely love playing with them and ripping the wool off, which is great because it is digestible. But once they rip off a piece and get something that they could swallow, or if they take enough wool off that it's a small ball, it has to be taken away. Like we don't want this to become a choking hazard. Okay. All right. Here's one of my favorites. So, John, I think you had a rawhide type there. Yeah, we'll call it a rawhide alternative. And one of the things, you know, that happens is that little, this little piece, the dogs lick and they try to unroll it and then they chew it off and it suddenly becomes similar to what's in your hand. And that becomes Dr. Judy. Oh my gosh. So rawhide is bad in for so many reasons. Most rawhide is bleached. So you're, um, or it's been soaked in something like formaldehyde. So, yeah. yeah. So you're feeding a product that has chemicals in it that you really don't want your pets to be consuming. The other thing with this is that, and rawhide is totally different from collagen. Rawhide is the skin with the hair removed. Collagen is the subcutaneous layer, the layer underneath the skin and the skin has been removed and that's very digestible and actually very healthy. So this is called a flip chip. And this is hard right now and I can't bend it. But after the dog chews on it for a little while, it becomes very soft and very flexible. And then they tend to want to swallow them. Um, so when we have the long ones that unwrap or unwind, or if you use a long taffy type rawhide, when they soften it up, they're going to try to swallow it and it's going to get stuck. And if they do manage to get it into their stomach, they're not digestible. So then that piece of skin is going to have to get somehow from one end to the other or get vomited up, which that's a choking hazard when they're vomiting it. And I've told this story a few times with you, Dr. Judy, but I think it warrants repeating. Um, I'm a very diligent pet parent, right? I, I'm like you, I am very observant and astute. Um, and I have given my dogs uh, pig ears several times over the years, dehydrated pig ears. And this one time, now, of course, I never leave the vicinity. I'm, they're always in eyesight. That is something you always want to Absolutely. be aware of with long-term shoes of any sort. Um, but my little girl was maybe, you know, 10 feet away and she was eating her pig ear. And all of a sudden she stopped. And of course, I immediately tuned in and I looked and her eyes went wide and I went over and the pig ear, the way that she had chewed it down, had done the exact thing, the shape of that rawhide chip, and it had blocked her airway. And luckily, I was there. I was able to do a finger sweep and get it out of her mouth. They will never get pig ears again because I just will not take that chance. Yep. But if I had walked out that door, like so many people do, because we take for granted that if something is marked a dog chew or a do dog treat, that it must be okay for them. Right. If we took that, if I had taken that for granted, I wouldn't have my dog anymore. So, exactly. um, again, I implore all the pet parents watching this: never take anything for granted. Always be there and observe, and then make the right choices. Yep. So these are even sold in veterinary offices as a dental chew. They have chlorhexidine impregnated in them, which we shouldn't be using that anyway. But I mean, talk about a dangerous product from from so many directions. Um, but these are the perfect size when they soften up and they inhale it makes the perfect patch over the airway and can be very difficult to get out of there. So uh, don't ever, ever, ever feed rawhide chips, flip chips, anything like that. And then she had the, the big chew, but then there's also these little chews, these little spiral wrap chews. Well, what happens as they start to unwind them? Then you have a long piece and that can get stuck in the airway as well. Never take it for granted, like Jonna says, that they know how to chew something, that they're going to chew it appropriately. And if your dog has never had chews, don't assume that they know how to chew. Um, so that's why for those of us who are raw feeders and we feed raw meaty bones, it's imperative that you learn how to feed them safely. You learn what kind of a chewer your dog or cat is, because dog the cats can have raw meaty bones as well. But you need to know how they are going to act with that. Are they going to gulp? Are they going to and then nibble it down? What is their chewing style? So we have a course on Dr. Judy Yu on raw bones and how to feed them. It was done by Dr. Nick Thompson. So um, you know he's he's 
huge in the raw feeding world. So if you've never done it and you want some instruction on it, it's not an expensive course, definitely worthwhile if you want to move over to something like that, but you want to make sure that you're doing it appropriately. So we talked about balls being the right size for the dog. So Jonna has a couple of balls that she uses for her dogs. And I have a couple that I use for my dogs. So I fell in love with these Jolly Balls when we bought, um, when we adopted Charlie, our Cocker Spaniel, because he is a toy-aholic and he's also destructo dog. He destroys everything we give him. And I can't give him, for instance, the dryer balls. They're too small for him or even a tennis ball. He, he's the type that he gets aggressive with it and he wants to chase after it and he's a gulper. So we bought him actually the bigger sizes, uh, the six inch, I believe, Jolly Ball. This is now his favorite toy in the entire world. He absolutely cannot destroy it. He's had it for a few months now and he plays with it all the time. He carries it around by the handle. There is no way that this will fit inside a cocker's mouth but he could still carry it around and play fetch. So for slightly smaller dogs, this is the little four inch ball. And then we have big ones, much bigger for big dogs. And then Jonna has a couple of different kinds of balls. So, so this is the planet dog ball. And this is what I use uh, wholly with my dog Lola, who is totally a baller. So this is a big ball, but it allows very easily for them to grip it with their mouth and carry it around. Um, this other one also kind of, I don't even know, the brand of this, I'm sorry, but if it were to get caught, there's still airway so they can still breathe. So it still is the potential for an obstruction, but at least they can get airway in when you go rush to the emergency room to get that out. Um, yeah. One of the things you always want to think about when you're throwing balls, though, is throw the ball away from your dog. I know it's really cute and great for photos to get them to toss something and to catch it in their mouth, but that's just setting your dog up for a potential hazard. And even if you've done it a million times, and it has never resulted in a problem. It just takes that one time for it to become the hazard. Um, yep. That could be the final hazard, so. Yep. For anyone who practices golf in your yard, golf balls, those are huge chokers, huge for obstruction, because they're tiny. And if you have a medium to large size dog and you're pitching golf balls and they're grabbing them, first of all, if it hits them, it's gonna hurt like heck, but second, those are a huge choking hazard. And so one of the choking incidents, I talked about it yesterday, but one of the choking incidents that I saw in uh, the emergency service was a guy who was throwing uh, a round rubber ball, about a little smaller than a tennis ball, at the wall and bounce, and it would bounce off the wall and his shepherd was leaping up and catching it. What a great trick. The dog was having a great time right up until it caught it and it went right into his airway and was stuck. Um, we. Story had a happy ending because he was able to get to us fast enough for us to be able to get it out of there. But if he had lived three minutes further away, it was not going to have the happy ending that we wanted. So never bounce things off a wall for your dog to catch coming at them. Never throw balls at your dog. Um, and that's why I love this because I can grab it by the handle. I can toss it out in my backyard and Charlie is going to go chase it. And by the time he gets to it, it's not even bouncing around anymore. He just grabs it by the handle. And a so, few people are mentioning how their dogs have chewed the handle off. You know, again, it I just goes back to know your do know I've your kind of, dog. I've seen a few dogs that have done that. So if your dog is the type of to chew the handle off, obviously find a different type of ball. Yep. Um, or maybe, you know, Jolly Ball has the, the horse balls or those Jolly eggs that are actually of a harder material that, yep. you know, they can't get their mouth on. Yep. Um, so there are other alternatives out there. Yeah, because be we, the, we have the, we have the, big big like 14 13 inch for our donkeys yeah, yeah. <laughs> they think it's awesome all right <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about you know we talked about things that are not safe chews that are choking hazards and look around your house do you have window blinds that have cords do you have curtains that have pull cords uh, we're getting away from those things, but a lot of like when we buy blinds, they're the accordion ones that you push up and down. They don't have a loose string in them. Um, so look for things like that. What, just walk around your house and really look at uh, collars. Huge for choking. Never put your dog in a crate with a collar on. If your collar, if your pet's collar has tags hanging on it, don't leave the collar on them with the tags hanging when you leave the house. I came home one day. 25 years ago, came in, 
Couldn't find one of my cats. Went upstairs in my bedroom and he was sitting like this on the heat register. And I said, what are you doing? Why are you sitting in that funny position? And his ID tag had gone through the heat grate and then turned sideways and he was stuck. He couldn't get it back out. Luckily, he was a calm cat and he just sat there. I have no idea how long he was there, but I'm he just sat a, there. Yeah, I'm not a big fan of collars. I thought you were done. I'm sorry to interrupt you. I'm yeah, no, I'm not a huge fan. When you're at, not at home. Martin yep. Gale collars, you know, though they are great. If You know, they have that extra loop that if they get stuck, if you have multiple dogs and there's a collar, even if it's a clip collar, if they start playing when you're not home very easily, you hear it about daycares all the time that the other dog can come in and twist and you can have one dog choking the other one out. Um, so I'm a big fan of, fan of naked animals at home. Naked animals. <laughs> yep. Yep. I got some naked animals at home. Um, okay. So let's talk about safe chews. Um, so the Bow Wow Labs, for those of you who are not familiar, they make the Bow Wow Buddy. Um, and they come in like a bunch of different sizes. And so John has got a different one. And then I have so a little, six little sizes. tiny one. Six sizes, Six sizes. To dogs okay. from under 15 pounds to over 100 dog, 100 pounds. Yeah, because in front of me, I have an extra large. This one's an extra, you, that, extra that large. Be, that would be for the Mastiffs. Yeah, the this one is that the you extra, have extra large, which is uh, 100 plus pounds. And then there's this little tiny one. This must be the either the 15 to 30 or the less than 15. Yeah. It's That's the... I should, I should actually know that color. I believe that's the extra small, which would be okay. under the 15. And then I have the medium, which is purple. Um, and just for your oh, yeah, this viewers, is extra small. Yeah, just for your viewers, um, what these do is they're designed to hold bully sticks. I know someone had asked a question about a bully stick. So bully sticks are really a dog's favorite long-term chew, but when they get down to that last one inch, they become that hazard that we're talking about, either a choking hazard or the potential for uh, obstruction, which is a whole different matter, which is equally as important. So what this device does is you put the bully stick inside and you screw it down. And then when it's properly inserted, I can't pull it out and your dog can't pull it out. So they enjoy all of the benefits of the oral health benefits, the mental stimulation from chewing, um, the engagement, but without that that risk. And I know Dr. Judy, you've um, inserted a few other really great chews. Yeah. Into the so I'm a huge fan of uh, ram horns because they're actually made out of hair. I'm not a fan of antlers because they're very hard and we see a saw in practice, a ton of broken teeth. Um, and your dogs, even with broken teeth, will chew on things. It's kind of amazing. We've saw dogs that literally had destroyed, like taken off half of a tooth and they're still chewing because they're just really aggressive chewers. But I like these because they're actually made of hair so instead of big pieces coming off they tend to chip 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 away um, however when they chew and they usually start at the big end they chew they end up with this small end and if you have a big dog who's got a small end the chances of them wanting to swallow that are pretty big um, so i actually play i lost you <laughs> You're on Instagram. We can see you on Instagram, but that's it. There oh, you are. It does that every once in a while. We have no idea why. All right. <laughs> so I took the, the small little Bow Wow Buddy and I took my lamb horn. You can do this with big ones, bigger uh, holders and stick the small end in there. It fits in beautifully and then screw down your end to hold it in place. So that way, when they get down to that last little bit, they can't swallow that last little bit. We had a couple dogs in the office here the other day that were chewing on these and they were down to that last little piece. And I was, I was just kind of doing the, Oh my gosh, like, I don't want to have to save a dog. Um, so, and then we also have, I like collagen dental chews. So this is what I was talking about. It's the layer under the skin. Um, and again, it's, so it's not like a rawhide. It doesn't soften into a long roll. It chips in little pieces. And then it's got fish skin wrapped around it, which also chips. Um, and so this, these bigger ones would fit in the bigger Bow Wow Buddies as well. Um, but watch your dogs when you give these kinds of things, when they get down to that last little nub and you're like, oh, I'm just afraid that they're going to just want to just, just take it away. Just take it away. Um, and then other things like the um, fish skins 
the, the fish skin shoes. So these will fit in there as well. And again, these tend to kind of chip apart. Um, and so, you know, the thing is for, for dogs that are really big dogs that are aggressive chewers that go through things in an instant, I get that people are looking for something that's going to keep their dog busy for more than a minute and a half. But really think about what it is that you're giving them, how they're going to chew it. Don't walk away from them. Um, it's just, it's really critical that uh, we keep them safe and we pre prevent choking hazards. So look around your house, look for, you know, do you have small children? Do you have grandchildren? Do they have a bunch of small toys? When Sarah leaves our house, actually, even while Sarah's at our house, I'm like running around grabbing things as they're falling to the floor because my, I call them puppies, but my two-year-old dogs, they want everything. If it's hitting the floor, it's theirs, and now it's a game. Um, so be really careful with that. And um, even, even food items, right? If you're thinking about if you're okay. we didn't talk wrapping about anything in saran wrap or aluminum foil, which hopefully you're not using, but anything like that that can potentially get on the floor or if you're getting ready to take the garbage out. I even had a situation where I was making ghee and I had gauze and I was literally about to take the garbage out and the gauze tasted like ghee and my dog went for it. And again, luckily... You know, just to take this to the uh, digress for a second, if you have an animal that's accepting your hands around their mouth in their teeth, if you've kind of desensitized them to allow you to brush their teeth and whatnot, you're going to have an easier time getting something hazardous out of their mouth than if a dog isn't desensitized. But just think about chip bags, like anything like that, that tastes like food that is going to be like Dr. Judy said of when you see no, when you say no, they go and they grab faster and try to get it down quicker. Those are the types of things to really be aware about all the time. Well, you know, and I've seen on social media, it's not really choking as much as suffocation, but animals that stick their head in a chip bag and then get stuck and they can't yeah. get back out of it. Um, so it's really a matter. And like, for instance, Sarah has, um, you know, a lot of times she has a baggie, a plastic baggie, and it's got some snacks of some sort in it. Well, that plastic is something that absolutely could cover the airway if one of the dogs decided, hey, I'm going to grab that and try to get it down. That's um, another great point as to why you should have the appropriate treat holders when you're training or when whatever you're doing with your dogs, because those little Ziploc bags really can just be consumed quickly and cause uh, wreak, it can wreak havoc. Yep. So look around your house, you know, think about, do you have cats? Do you have dogs? Oh, where's your little candle thing? Oh, yeah. So because I was walking around my house and I found a bunch of hazards. So this is a candle, this little round candle, which is the perfect size to obstruct the airway of my little dog. And then this was a little chapstick that I had that my cat would totally be able to knock off, bat around. And then they have flavorings in them, right? That make us, they smell sweet and make our lips feel good. Um, so these are all just little common hazards just to walk around your house, do a quick sweep. And I say, do a quick sweep, expecting that you're having a toddler coming to your house for the day. Get down on all fours. If you need to, you might look silly for five seconds, but if it saves the thousands of dollars, the potential of losing your dog or, you know, the emotional trauma that you might go through, it is worth it every single, every single second. Absolutely. So, yeah. And if you, if you only have dogs, it's easy to look for the dog stuff, but if you have cats, just remember the cats love vertical climbing and they are going to get on every shelf and go boop, 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 and knock things down for your dogs. And then, you know, it's like they tag team to get into trouble. Ugh. Anyway, uh, so Bow Wow Labs has something they're giving away. And the winner is Elizabeth at Rolf the Dane, which uh, Jonna will get in touch with them. But what is it that you are giving away? This is so, so cool. We're giving away our starter kit. So you're going to get uh, the Bow Wow Buddy that fits your dog, as well as some of our safe fit bully sticks that are guaranteed to fit the size of the Bow Wow Buddy that you win, as well as a stay fresh jar. So everything can be self-contained. So we will reach out to you right after um, this ends and we'll get your dog's weight and we'll make certain to send you out the appropriate size starter kit. And this thank you for entering, Dane. I'm everyone. thinking I'm thinking he's a big dog. <laughs> I'm thinking he is. So he might need this. This thing's heavy. <laughs> All right. Well, John, thank you so much. And uh, I'm so appreciative that your team decided that this was so important. It, it's not easy to get a national recognition day. This 
was a lot of work. Um, and I'm so grateful to be a part of this and getting people to have more awareness. So please share our videos from this week. Please talk to your friends. If you are at their house and they're, you know, you're going out and they give their dog something and walk out the door and go, Oh yeah, he chews on that because he has separation anxiety that just keeps him busy. And that, you know, speak up. Don't, and, don't wait for something to happen. And visit national pet choking prevention day.com. Dr. Judy and I have a lot of these tips that we've talked about there easily that you can uh, share with friends and family and hopefully prevent another dog or cat from choking because our target is to have zero dogs and cats um, choke because again, most of the times it is preventable. Yep. Net zero. That's what Net we're zero. headed for. Thank you, John, very much. Enjoy the rest of your day and your week. Thank you. Thank you, John, very much. Oh, it says we're live, Joey. Stop.